Hello, I'm developing Paths and Ways, a 2D action RPG in the Godot game engine. Set in a post-apocalyptic world and featuring challenging Souls-like combat, local cooperative play, and hand-drawn artwork. Last time, I'd finished the first few areas of the game, which introduced the player to combat, made the first campsite, which acts as a checkpoint and allows the player to level up, and begun work on a bandit camp, which will be the final area of the first chapter of the game. If you want a proper catch-up, I'll link the full playlist of devlogs in the description. In this video, I will cover the work I've done in completing the first chapter, which includes the first boss fight, an overhaul of the tutorial, and a whole lot of polish. The first thing the boss needs is a home. I drew the interior of his hut, complete with writing desk, kitchen, bed, and added the fireplace in the center, a truly desirable studio flat. I already had a large octopus-faced bandit from very early in development, who was keen to call this hut a home. He needs something to make him special, other than higher stats when compared to his smaller counterparts. So I decided to create a vicious triple spin attack. First, he clearly telegraphs the attack by letting out a roar and waving his sword in the air, then unleashes three devastating blows in quick succession, lunging towards the player with each rotation. I got it set up so that once you get the boss down to half health, he becomes enraged and starts using the swing attack. This hopefully lulls the player into a false sense of security with the first half of the fight, before giving them a real challenge to finish him off. The reason to fight the boss is to acquire a lantern so you can enter the dark caves back near the campsite. So I created a lantern powered by a firefly, attached a flickering light to it, and gave the boss the ability to hold the lantern in their offhand. To balance the boss fight for two players, my previous solution of simply doubling the number of enemies doesn't work, as it's highly unlikely that every boss in the game would have an identical twin, and the hut would also get very crowded. Instead, I found the simplest solution was to double the health of the boss. This isn't perfect, as two players are much more likely to deplete the boss's poise and knock them to the ground, and can also effectively tag-team the boss, taking it in turns to take his focus. However, these require solid teamwork, so I'm okay with it. I may end up increasing poise as well as health for bosses in two-player mode further down the line. Once defeated, a simple UI bar will appear, letting you know that you've acquired the lantern. When you return to the campsite, parents will have moved in front of the entrance to the caves, congratulate you, give you an additional health potion, and send you on your way. One weakness of both the boss fight and fights in general is that it can feel fairly stagnant. Often, neither you or your foe will move at all during combat. My plan to improve this was to give enemies the ability to roll away from a blow instead of blocking. I got it set up so that when an enemy blocks an attack, there is a chance that they'll roll away to the side. This works quite nicely and allows me to have more variation in my enemies' behaviour by giving them different odds of rolling away. Another similar issue is that when an enemy is low or even completely out of stamina, they still try to block attacks. I introduced a flee state, which allows enemies to run away from the player when they're low on stamina. This works great, especially out in the open. But with the boss, who's in an enclosed space, he often ends up running into a wall. There's probably a clever way of solving this with pathfinding, however, I often try to solve problems in simple ways. Alas, I am but a simple guy. While fleeing, I check the velocity of the enemy once a second. If it drops below a low threshold, I add or subtract 90 degrees to their desired direction of flight. This lets them escape to the side. While I was in the swing of adding variation to the enemies, I decided to add a new weapon, the club which is slightly slower than the sword and deals more blunt damage instead of sharp damage. The way my weapon system works is that on an enemy's stats, I choose which weapon ID I want. This shows the appropriate sprite when the enemy is loaded and loads the stats of the weapon such as damage, speed and the scale of the hitbox. These stats are then used during combat. To finish up the bandit camp, I added an unlockable shortcut from the boss hut back to the start. This allows players to get back from the campsite to the boss without having to trek around the entire bandit camp, hopefully reducing any aggravation caused by getting defeated by the boss and having to start again. If you want an in-world explanation as to why there is a log held up by a string, let's say the bandits are very health and safety conscious and wanted a fire escape in case the only other exit becomes blocked. I also added a small sign pointing it out, just in case someone misses it. Finally, 
I created a new song for the area, which has been playing over this part of the video. It has an intro, main loop, more intense loop, and outro. It is adaptive in the most basic sense, as it will switch to the more intense loop while fighting the boss, and play the outro once you defeat him. The combat is in need of some tweaking to get it feeling as satisfying as possible. If you circle around an enemy while they're blocking, they instantly change direction to face you and start blocking again immediately, making getting around the side of an enemy impossible. I introduced two short delays in the enemy's code, one after entering a block, preventing them from changing direction, and another after they do change direction, preventing them from entering a block for a fraction of a second. You currently have to be blocking in the exact opposite direction of an attack to successfully block it. It is generally good game design to be biased towards the player, to ensure they never feel cheated. I tweaked for blocking logic, to make blocks successful for the player unless they literally have their back towards the attack, but remain strict on the enemy. These changes allow the player to get around the side of a blocking enemy and deal damage. Blocking still feels very strong, as I still have stamina regeneration in the block state, though I simply halve the rate of stamina regeneration during a block, to promote movement instead of standing still with the block button held. Another issue is that if you successfully parry attack, but don't land the follow-up attack combo, the enemy often manages to land a hit before you do. To fix this, I tweaked the length of the parried and recoil animation. The parried animation plays when you parry an opponent, so I made that shorter, and the recoil animation plays when you are parried, so I made that longer. I further tweaked the parried state, allowing the animation to be skipped entirely when attack is pressed. These changes make parrying a lot more rewarding and powerful, both for the player and enemies. Currently, when you die, your experience is reset to zero. I changed this, allowing players to keep their experience on death. This is hopefully so players who are struggling will still feel like they are progressing, even if they only manage to take out a few enemies. I may end up introducing the classic Souls-like mechanic of having players drop their experience on death, and giving them a chance to head back and pick it up on the next life. But for now, I'm going for the simplest solution. A common issue I've seen is that a player will knock an enemy down and think they are dead, only to be slightly annoyed when they get back up. I tried to make this more obvious by making the downed animations more pronounced, but I may need to push this further. I also created some new idle animations for the enemies, to hopefully give them a bit more life and make scenes less static. I added the logo to the main menu, which I think turns it from a boring menu into a nice clean title screen. I redid the music for the intro, and added a short animation which I hope helps set the tone. I completely redid the controller controls, as they kinda suck. I had it set up so that you had to use your thumb to press buttons for attacking, blocking and rolling, which means that your thumb is doing all the heavy lifting, and needs to be changing position constantly. To fix this, I moved attacking to the right trigger, blocking to the left trigger, and left rolling for the thumb. This feels so much better, as you don't need to change the position of your fingers at all during combat. Finally, I overhauled the tutorial, as again it kinda sucked. Previously, all the information on how to fight was explained through text, and there was no opportunity to try anything out before facing real enemies. I added examples which play alongside the text explanation, so that the player can see exactly what is being explained. I also created a dummy, which allows the player to get a feel for combat before diving in. After parrying is explained, I created an automated dummy which swings periodically, allowing the player to get the hang of parrying before moving on. And with that, I'm ready to call the first chapter complete. If it looks interesting to you, please consider giving it a play. Any feedback is hugely appreciated, there's a link to download the game in the description. Since completing the first chapter a couple of months ago, I have begun work on chapter 2, so feel free to explore deep into the dark caves ahead although I'll hold off talking in depth about it until the next devlog, whenever that may be. When I started this project around two years ago, I deliberately didn't mention how long I wanted the final game to be. This is because I've never made a game on this scale before, and simply didn't know what a realistic goal would look like. I now think I've got a clearer idea. I'd love the game to be around the length of a feature film, maybe two or three hours spread over six or seven chapters. My current goal is to continue work on the second chapter, which will be a mostly linear journey through the caves. Following that, I would like a couple of chapters in a much more open area to encourage a sense of discovery, before the player is funneled into the final chapter or two. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed and want to see where this project goes, please consider sticking around. As always, any feedback is greatly appreciated. Cheers.